Welcome to this rapid revision session looking at Sir Francis Drake, at least in the context of Elizabeth's foreign policy. There will be future lessons on his exploration. Foreign policy. At the start of Elizabeth's reign, England was far from being a dominating world power. Both Spain and France had bigger populations and more wealth to play with. This meant Elizabeth had to suit her foreign policy with the domestic or home needs of England and bearing in mind the religious tensions in the kingdom and in Europe as a whole. In brief, Elizabeth wanted to defend England's borders from attack, to protect her position as the Queen of England, and to make England richer through trade with other countries, but also to avoid costly and risky wars which might overthrow her or divide the loyalty of her subjects. Where does Drake fit into all this? New world, new and old rivalries. The 1500s were an age of exploration for European traders and adventurers. By Elizabeth's reign, English traders bought and sold in Germany, Russia and the Mediterranean. There were also trade links with China, India, Persia and the New World of America. However, it wasn't all plain sailing. One of the most important European ports for England was Antwerp in the Netherlands, which was controlled by Spain. Bad relations with Spain would hurt English trade. Many of the Central and South American colonies, where there were valuable resources and trading opportunities, were also controlled by Spain and Portugal. This included Florida, the Caribbean, Mexico, Chile and more. Anyone who wanted to take advantage of the gold, sugar, tobacco and other valuable products from the New World needed a license from Spain, and Spain was often reluctant to grant these. Instead, some English merchants decided to take these things without asking permission first. These people were privateers, or simply pirates. In the 1500s, people who attacked ships with a view to stealing their cargoes were known as pirates, just as they are today. However, when is a pirate not a pirate? It can be a matter of a point of view. Elizabeth, like other rulers, would sometimes give people a license to raid ships of a particular, usually a typically enemy, country. Such raiders were called privateers. The spoils would go to the crown, but be shared with the privateer who captured them. Privateers remained pirates to those that they raided, but they could be heroes to the countries they served. So what were, were they really, pirates or privateers? It is really a matter of perspective. So who was Sir Francis Drake? Drake was a merchant. He made his fortune trading valuable products from the New World. This made him a wealthy merchant in society, which remember is part of the social hierarchy in towns. He was also an adventurer. Trading in the New World meant exploring too. This made him a so-called merchant venturer. Was he a privateer or a pirate? Drake captured Spanish ships and their cargoes, such as in the West Indies in 1570-71. This prompted Elizabeth to grant him a license to raid Spanish ships as a privateer, but he was simply a pirate to the Spanish. He was also one of Elizabeth's favourites. Elizabeth invested heavily in Drake. This paid off. His Panama expedition got £40,000 in silver, a truly colossal amount in today's money. Although an attempt to improve relations with Spain meant he wasn't celebrated on his return in 1573, Elizabeth was privately very impressed. Drake was also an explorer. In a future video, I'll have a more detailed look at his 1577-80 voyage, which included a circumnavigation of the globe. This was very dangerous. Of the five ships that set out, only one, Drake's Golden Hind, returned. He was the first Englishman to go all the way around the world. But he was also a warrior. In his 1577 expedition, Drake repeatedly raided Spanish settlements in the New World. He would later raid the Spanish fleet at Cadiz in 1587. He was also a leader in battles against the Spanish Armada in 1588, which again will get its own video soon. Here's a summary of Drake's achievements. Drake's raids understandably infuriated Philip II of Spain, and delighted Elizabeth. When he returned from his circumnavigation, he did so with about £400,000 in Spanish treasure. I mean, that's a simply staggering amount. That's about the same as all the tax takings for the entire country for a whole year. Some of this paid off investors in the voyage, but it also provided valuable funds for Elizabeth's cash-strapped government. He also brought back tales of adventure, with daring and even piratical raids on Spanish settlements in Chile and Peru, as well as up the Atlantic. He also gained fame, Elizabeth knighted him on the deck of Golden Hind, again much to the fury of Philip, who felt that he was a common pirate. He also established territories. 
Drake established a region on the American west coast north of California, calling it New Albion and claiming it for the Queen, although of course he never settled there. So what's his importance? As well as fame and fortune, Drake's actions had wider effects. As the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe, Drake became a national hero and made England look strong to other countries. He plundered gold and silver and helped top up Elizabeth's struggling finances. Drake's raids on Spanish ships and colonies challenged Spain's claim to be the dominant power in the New World, although, if we're honest with ourselves, it probably still was. And Drake's knighting sent a defiant message to Philip II of Spain and told him that England would fight. Our final points then. Relatively recent discoveries of the New World of the American continent brought opportunities for trade and wealth. Spain was dominant in the New World. Elizabeth wished to challenge this. One way was through raiding privateers. Drake was one of the most famous privateers. He was a merchant, an adventurer, a warrior, an explorer, and a favorite of Elizabeth I all at the same time. His raids made England wealthier, and his circumnavigation and exploring made him famous. His activities made him a hero to the English, and I'm very well aware, before you all jump on the comments, this also made him a pirate to the Spanish. This soured relations between Elizabeth's England and Philip II's Spain even further. Drake's legacy, basically, is a matter of perspective. He's a hero to some, particularly the English, and an absolute villain to others, particularly the Spanish. But he also had a dark side. He was one of England's first slave traders as well. I'm not going to be ignoring that history. These are all things that we're going to cover in future details and videos about Drake. But for now, that's the end of this rapid revision video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope it's been useful to you. And if it has, please like the video and subscribe for the channel. It all helps the channel grow. Thank you very much and goodbye.